I'm asking myself that right at this moment. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was turning 40, and I'd been a parent for about eight years, and I wanted to say something about childhood. I was trying to make a movie about childhood, but then the dilemma hit me of like, well, what part of childhood? All my ideas were all over the place. Oh! Don't worry about it. Wish we can use the bumpers. You don't want the bumpers. Life doesn't give you bumpers. The grid of one through 12, those grades you kind of have to go to, that's kind of what you're sentenced to from childhood. You're gonna be in school through 12th grade. You're gonna live in your parents' house. There was this thing beckoning beyond that, and I wanted to get there in the movie. And that's what I had to express about growing up. Finally, I just had this one big idea. We'll just get the same cast, and we'll film a little bit each year. Like, could you do that? Would that work as a movie? I met a lot of kids back then, and Eller, he seemed the most thoughtful in a way, a little ethereal. I liked the way his mind worked. He wasn't even reading yet at that age, but I liked his taste and how he was kind of processing. We were sort of a family, you know, he was like the son I never had. He was maturing along with my own daughter, Lorelei. They were like siblings in a way. Eller, throw a stuffed animal the way you do. Is it fun having a little brother? Um, well, yes, but I like being an only child better. Describe Eller. Well, he's interesting. He's nice most of the time. He dresses like a teenager. He really does. He said I dress like a teenager. Once Laurel, I kind of knew about the project. I don't think I could have <laughs> lived my life in a normal fashion with some other girl in that part. <laughs> what are your favorite movies? Well, Waking Life was cool, but um, well, the animation was cool, but um, well, it was kind of boring. Oh, for me. Not to insult you, Daddy, but it was kind of boring for a little child. I think my original conception, I couldn't help but be a little more autobiographical, thinking, well, maybe a kid who's into sports and all that, and Elder's not really like that at all, but I could definitely see that he was gonna mature into an interesting adult. Door. When Richard first called me and he asked me, what are you gonna be doing the next 12 years? He didn't tell me about my part at first, he just told me about the idea. And I said, I want to do it. And then I said, oh, what's the part? <laughs> I should probably ask you that. There's my mom in the movie, and then there's her son in real life. But it's supposed to be me. She has like the exact same color of eyes, like the same tone of skin. She would be totally believable as my mom. When I first came out, their parents let me basically stay with them for a couple days. Like, I took Ella to the laundromat while Lorelai went to an art class. So just trying to get them somewhat comfortable, at least asking me for things like, I'm hungry or I want food or whatever thing it is. She haunts a toilet? And they were so cute. It's so sweet. We did so many art projects. We painted the walls of stories that they liked. His bunk had some and her bunk had another, and we were painting over them just the layers of us that were in everything. What if after we move, Dad's trying to find us and he can't? Oh, that won't be a problem. He can call Grandma and she'll tell him. Hey! Oh my, oh, look at you, you're so big, hey, MJ. Michael Frenzy! You know, the film's called Boyhood, but it could be called Motherhood, Fatherhood, Bumbling Through Adulthood. It was an opportunity to see parents evolve as well as kids. Run the lab! A cheer for the father! Woo! You guys are gonna be seeing a lot more of me, okay? I missed you two real bad while I was gone, okay? I want you to know that. I just needed to take some time. It's kind of a simple idea, really, to watch time work through a film, but it's so impractical on a production level. Are you gonna, like, do Next year, I'm thinking your contrast is better. The shorter it is, then it's long. It'll seem like, ooh, a lot of time has gone by. You know, to shoot three days, you still have to cast and get locations and get a crew and rent equipment. And each time, it was like its own film. Action! I got lucky that IFC Productions, who funded my last two films, like the idea. It's low budget enough. I mean, they're giving me just enough every year. But do it professionally. It's very important that we're shooting in 35 millimeter. I want the film to look 
like one film, almost to be seamlessly dissolving from one year into the next, just people subtly aging. So I had to shoot that on film. I think if I would have done it high def or any of the current technologies, it would be very dated visually. I mean, he didn't even ask. He just cut it. Now I can see your pretty eyes and your foxy face. Do you think that being raised by a single mom has affected you? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, my mom was very young when she had me. I think she was 22 to 19 when she had my oldest sister. We sort of, in that way, grew up together. You hear people who have teen moms say, oh, we grew up together, but there's something to that. You go through their own maturation, their own dating. I saw my mom get married a few times, a lot of relationships. She went to graduate school. We were kind of pulled through her entire life. When I was a young adolescent male, there was this growing sexual awareness. You know, all this pressure starts. What about you, Mason? Have you ever gotten any? He gets a taste of like what high school guys talk like. They're very kind of crude and sexual. I hope it's funny. Do you feel that the character's life has paralleled your life in many ways? Whoa! People ask me that a lot, and not particularly. It's, it's a pretty different character. Yeah. I mean, there. I mean, there are certain aspects. You know, there's whatever. There's teen angst. There's drugs. There's sex. What, what everyone goes through, but like on a more personal level, I think it's more similar, if anything, to, to Rick's childhood. And you men. A little bit. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. What Rick tries to do is kind of harness a collective imagination and get people aboard something larger than something one individual could do. Climb to the top, look over the ledge, dance barefoot on a razor's edge. Reach for the stars, grab the tiger by the tail. If I don't try, I'll never fail. This is one of the first years where Eller has evolved into such a co-collaborator. You know, in the early years, it was sort of manipulating a performance from a kid to now, you know, we started it several weeks ago, just got Eller and, you know, talking about the year and trading ideas. I work with Eller the same way I work with Ethan now. You know, it's funny the way memory works. I'm kind of obsessed with that. So this film, I was really trying to go for those off-kilter moments. You know, they're not trying to say any big statement about growing up. It's just another moment in your life. There's a lot of drama in and around, but to varying degrees, what's dramatic, what's not dramatic, what's banal, what's poetry. Who do you want to be, Mason? What do you want to do? All of the areas that we are unaware of, all of the things we miss, how we think these big moments are life, when I graduate, when I get married, but really maybe life is the moments in between those big moments. I love you, babe, so proud of you. To Mason. To Mason! He did a great job with both of them. I never thought I'd hear you say that. Well, it's true. Thank you. When he goes away to school, there's a part of her, I think, that, that thought her life was going to begin once her kids grew up. Mom. You know what I'm realizing? My life is just going to go like that. This series of milestones. Sending you off to college. You know what's next? Huh? It's my fucking funeral! She's not even aware enough to be able to say, I just don't know who I am when I'm not a mom. Her last baby goes. I think it totally freaks her out. What do you think you'll be doing 12 years from now? No idea. I suppose everybody wants to know what everybody's doing 12 years from now. It's not important to know that far ahead, just like in life. How boring it would be if you knew the day and time of your own death or something. I mean, I've had 12 years to think about the notion of, well, where does growing up end and where does aging start? You know, if you ask anyone, like even our title, Boyhood, I was like, well, where does boyhood end? Is there a year that you're no longer, you know, it's like, what does that mean? Sometimes we joke about that an alternate title for the movie would be Some Grow Up and Some Age, because watching this movie, it makes it clear how fast time is always moving. And now, in a lot of ways, this movie is about trying to to live in the present. I mean, the good news is you're feeling stuff, you know, and you gotta hold on to that. after 12 years, 
I feel like I've taken it for granted for a long time, just this project and being able to work on it just because I don't remember life without it. So it's just been such an integral part of everything that I have forgotten to appreciate it, I think, for a lot of the time. And I feel kind of remorseful. It's almost perfect because that's exactly kind of the message that the movie closes on is throw yourself into the moment. So maybe that's what I've learned most of all. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a hell of an experience. Hello, Valerie here with a pretty cool fact from Thelma and Louise. Did you know that Ridley Scott had vetoed the idea of Louise kissing Thelma at the end? But Sarandon did it anyway without telling him. It was the last shot on the last day and Scott had no choice but to use it. And that, as they say, is history. Mwah! Subscribe to keep up to date on all the latest trailers. See ya!